It's the second best of five of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're on Belchia Vestige, or Vestige. And to the top left-hand corner in Teal, playing Zerk for Hokago Tea Team and Russia, it's Suno Kazri. And to the bottom right, playing Protoss in red for no team but Chile, it's Piscalita. So, Piscalita came in from rank 7, no, came in from rank 6, never mind, and Suno Kazri came in from rank 3, out of the season mode. So let's see what these two ladies will show us today. They played against each other. Of course, everyone uh, has played all of the others. Uh, during season mode, and I think Sino Kazri win a uh, one pretty convincingly against Piscalita in their season mode match. So let's see if Piscalita actually did her homework and uh, found a way to beat our little bane busting bitch. So. Spawning pool already out, extractor after a hatchery first, while Piscalita also goes for a pretty early expand after the gateway, trying to wall off her main base a little bit. Uh, is now just checking. Her opponent will see nothing all too unusual, has now seen that there's a base planted down already, so actually that, that's all the information you really need. Maybe you just want to uh, spot for the second gas later on, but, and see if a really hardcore all-in is headed your way, but yeah, uh, for the first two minutes that's actually the only scout you need. Seeing the hatch timing tells you everything. I mean, yes, there could be the slight possibility that your opponent actually goes for three bases before pool, so I guess getting inside and seeing the actual pool is a good thing. But it's not really common these days, so uh, you normally don't need to be worried about that. So, soon in the meantime, producing four links, just getting some scouting done, and we'll probably just move backwards with these links later on towards these watchtowers here. But for now, of course, she just spreads them out, wants to see what her opponent is doing. Two other links just chasing the probe down, doesn't want uh, the probe to throw down some sort of proxy pylon anywhere close to her base. So, uh, two links actually get inside, but even inside the main base, but not for long because the adept was only waiting there. So, not really that much of additional information there for Suno Kazri has only seen the two gateways in front of the base and that the Nexus is already down and now just immediately goes for a third hatch herself. Uh, actually, kind, kind of an okay timing just around the three minute mark, pretty normal here. So, Robotics Facility going down for Piscalita here as well. Maybe we will see Piscalita pulling a full Koshki here, or maybe not. So, we'll just uh, have to wait a little bit longer. I don't really think that Piscalita will go for an Immortal uh, type push. We haven't really seen her doing this all too often. Uh, usually she just goes for a stalker heavy play with a lot of sentries here. But maybe actually, yeah, she, she actually still likes using her sentries like back in Heart of the Swarm or even the good old Wings of Liberty times where Protoss was really dependent on good force field usage. And good force field still can be useful. I mean, yes, Zerk now has Ravagers and uh, Ravager Biles can actually destroy force fields, but it still takes some time. I mean, the Ravager Biles just have to rain down on the correct force wheels opening up um, another part and then of course if you have enough sentries you can just throw down more and more and more force fields so they have to break them down once more and while the force fields are still being torn down the biles cannot really rain on the forces of your opponent so you still gain something doing it so Piscalina just moves uh, up to the fourth base and sends in the shades but uh, Sunukazri's overlord has already seen that so hopefully for Piscalina yeah, she doesn't really let them finish but uh, soon was uh, tracking her down already in the meantime. Suno this time going for roaches, which is a little bit unusual for her, at least from what we've seen her play throughout the season. Just lately she's, ju uh, she's um, changed up her style a little bit. Earlier uh, this season she used to be a mutating player. 
and uh, you could actually just um, uh, you could actually just um, have a look at your watch when the muters would come out from her. But um, yeah, she changed it up a little bit, uh, realizing that she was probably a little bit too predictable by only going muters every time. So she switched it up into roach play a little bit more and uh, was trying to get a grip. Uh, on how to play it a little bit better. So actually this is a wide open entrance here So Sunu could have actually even moved in maybe even surrounded all of these units still it would have been problematic There were sentries and the pylon cannon as well, but maybe she did ah, there it is see uh, ooh, Even luring out a few more force fields here. So still quite nicely done seems as if Sunu wants to be pretty aggressive here She already had a lot of roaches in production might even um, Morph them into ravages and then push uh, forward But for now she just retreats completely with all of the zerglings and roaches But still um, as I said, I mean she already has a considerable force here and might even be able to push out in just a few seconds time So in the meantime, we have a robotics facility producing um, the warp prism here basically just wants to get rid of that overlord so that's why she's retreating with units blink will be finished in just a few seconds as well the lair is already in the making actually a little bit late of a lair but after all she's seen so far i think so because we didn't really need to worry about um some shenanigans that would have needed a lair to be available like uh, dt's moving around so now she just actually com commits to some droning or wants to get the third base saturated obviously before moving into uh, her opponent's forces. Has just barely missed the war prism here but it seems as if the war prism now even gets in sight of Sunokosri's queen here. So Piscalita's plan has been spotted. This is just an overseer here, an, over, uh, an observer there so nothing of uh, utmost importance. Uh, Roach is now move on morphing into Ravagers, where Sunokazuri already has her army in position while the rest of the army is moving towards the natural base. So it seems as if again Pesquilia just wants to go for some multi-pronged uh, harassment. Uh, aggression. Aggression and harassment and it became aggression. That was pretty interesting there. So, okay, uh, the uh, units moving towards the right-hand side, nothing that Piscalita can do from here on out. Uh, now decides to move in from the left angle uh, with the rest of her forces. Ooh, and unfortunately the Zerglings already got the good surround, so ooh, nice force fields onto that ramp, so most of these forces just have to stay behind it. But the Zerglings are already nibbling away a lot of these uh, Stalker forces here, and now a lot of these forces are already out in the open. There are still some force fields left, uh, one bile hits quite White or connects quite well with uh, Piscalita's army here, and Piscalita just realizes these are too many Zerg forces, nothing I can really do here. So she just teleports out with the help of the Mothership Core while having taken her third base right behind that push. A few units still around, tries to deal some more damage with the Adepts over at the right hand side, and even managed to kill nine workers in the process. So got at least something out of that little push here, but she's still behind supply wise. Now just goes into another robotics facility after realizing that so many roaches and ravagers were out and also transitions into a Templar archive maybe for a storm maybe for Arkham's I mean she doesn't really have that much gas um, over but uh, I think it's probably going to be for storms maybe interesting decision here it's an aoe you don't really see that often anymore oh unfortunately for piscalita there's nothing here to protect these poor little probes from this circling run by over at the third hand at the third location Ooh, nice little force fields there, just separating a lot of these ravages but the biles still hit pretty convincingly and like i said i mean yes the ravager biles could rain down on these force fields tearing them down but most of the time you just want to have these biles raining down on the enemy forces in order to deal more damage and now Sunukazuri is on Titi Porters, just standing in front of Piscalita's base here. We have four Immortals out though, and they are dealing a lot of damage there. The Ravagers now pressuring inside. Sunukazuri has to be careful not to overcommit here and losing all of her precious Ravagers because once the meat shield is gone, these Ravagers can oftentimes not successfully retreat. And uh, uh, they, those are a big investment. I mean, uh, Roaches cost some money, Ravagers cost, uh, morphing them to Ravagers cost some money, and they are pretty slow units, so often you can just take them out if the Zerg is in full retreat. So, Piscalita holds for now, only losing a few buildings and a few units she could easily 
uh, get rid of. The most important parts of her army are the Immortals, the backbone of this army right now. Seems as soon as just <laughs> wants to greedily expand, double expand now, after realizing that her opponent has a third base ready in the meantime. So, okay, taking out these adepts over here, it's taking quite some time, even trying to get the war prism with the help of the corrosive bars, but unfortunately it's not in phasing mode, so it will move away once hit by the first uh, corrosive bile. Okay, and again, Suno likes to be aggressive, so she just wants to be all over the place. Uh, moves into the third base once more, and unfortunately for the leader once more, there is no static defense here to help her out. 13 probes die in the process, so Suno Kazui does a good job of keeping her opponent's economy low, but unfortunately not of keeping her opponent's army uh, small, and she herself hasn't really transitioned into anything higher tech. So now goes for an infestation pit and probably then wants to move into or move forward into uh, the hive tech. And I think she really, really needs it. Okay, another run by over here forces Piscalita back into the third base once more, delaying that push for a little bit. But yeah, Suno Kazuri actually needs time. I mean, supply wise, she's looking great. Uh, she has 109, 120, almost 281. But yeah, this is a pretty tough high tech army. We have High Templar. Stone will be done in just a few seconds. We have a lot of Immortals and Force Fields ready. So with good Force Fields just separating half of the army from the rest of it and then just the Immortals will just tear down all of these Roaches in an instant. And then we also have the additional damage by the Storms raining down on the Zerg forces here. And it seems that we will now go into the big engagement. Great Concave there for Sunokazri. But she immediately realizes that this High Tech army will just rip through her forces. Wow, okay, more Biles raining down the army. Piscalia just catching a good chunk of it and now retreats to the Zanlaga Tower for now. So Nokosvi just uh, realized she needs to back up for now, needs to gather more forces. In the meantime, we have another big harassment over to the left-hand side. It doesn't really matter to lose this base over here for Sonokosvi. I think she should not move over here and try to rescue it. She can't really save it anyways. I mean, this base will be taken out before uh, I mean, yes, of course, she might at least get the Zealots here, so at, uh, at least avenge herself on these Zealots. But yeah, there was no way that she could ever, ever hope to uh, keep it from going down. Now more storms raining down on the forces here. But Piscalita has to be careful. If she doesn't have that many force fields around, uh, this force might just close all around her. Just... Um, uh, just surround all of her army units and then maybe take them out. So War Prism moving into the main base might even be able to get some important tech buildings here. Basically, leader will just face. Okay, yeah. Soon because we seize it and uh, she's already moving backwards here. She has some links in position, doesn't want to sacrifice them, but it's only three zealots, so not really much that can be accomplished by it. Uh, Piscalia just loads them in while taking a fourth base of her own. And now, of course, the things become more critical there for Sunukazri. She needs some high tech answer to deal with her opponent's army units. Goes into an ultralist cavern. I don't really know if I like that decision. I mean, her opponent already has a lot of immortals out and Immortals just deal tons of damage to to um, Ultras. I mean, if you have a lot of them and also a lot of other stuff that moves around the army forces uh, of the Protoss, then the Ultras might just be the nail in the coffin, but ugh, it still can be problematic. For now, she at least successfully takes down the fourth base, denies that base to her Protoss opponent, makes everything that comes more and more all in here. So Piscalita will just have to move in for one final push. But maybe now the time has already arrived. Like we said before, there are no sentries here and no force fields whatsoever. So soon because we can just close in and pick off Immortal after Immortal here. Doesn't want to uh, overcommit. She doesn't really know what's up, what's that ramp. Maybe there are some uh, sentries just waiting to... Uh, divide her forces, so she didn't really want to overcommit there. Couldn't know, uh, couldn't possibly know what was up there. Basically, just moving with a war prism towards her opponent's base. There are still a few zealots waiting for a drone, an unsuspecting drone, to arrive. Seems as if she just wants to load these zealots in once more. Maybe wants to go into the main base again, uh, trying to take out important tech. Parthus. Okay, and this drone just gets taken out before you can finally deal some damage. So now the army of Sunikazri moves in once more, but again, we have a lot of heavy damage dealers right in front here. The 
Archons just dealing damage and also keeping the rest of the army away from the Immortals. Immortals just raining down damage on this army. Also, the pylons shooting onto Sulu Kasri's army. It seems that Sulu has just barely managed to take out like half of the forces of Piscalita here. She's still ahead army-wise, but again, her army is still on pretty low supply. But that's just what Sulu wants to do. Wants to keep her opponent's army small while denying bases. And if she does it successfully, she might actually be able to deal with this force even on low attack. So now the first Ultralisk is on the run, is in the making. Piscalita just desperately needs another base. I mean, her main base is dry. Her natural base is dry. Her third base is the only base that's actually mining. And we can see it in the income tab here. I mean, she's managed to deny her uh, to deny her opponent a lot of bases as well, but Suno is still sitting on like one and a half bases at least. We'll now probably just take out that warp prism over here and secure herself another base. But at the meantime, we have Piscalita pushing over at the right-hand side and Suno just has to move backwards in order to defend her precious fourth. Uh, now moves in, and again, we don't have that many force fields, and now, of course, with the Immortals out, force fields don't even matter anymore. That's, of course, the good thing about this. Maybe that was the idea behind Simo Kazri's decision here, that the Immortal would just break the force fields for her without wasting any biles. And now she just moves in, like we said before. I mean, if the Immortals are gone, the rest of the forces are just forfeit. So, moving in, killing the fourth once more, and it seems as if Piscalita is finally broken here. Suno might just move into the natural base as we speak, and will probably destroy everything. She can't possibly know how far ahead she already is, but after seeing her opponent losing every little immortal there was, every important tech unit that could have helped Piscalita to deal with these Ultralists, yeah, it should be game here. So Piscali then uh, Suno now pressing through GG and Suno takes the first game. Cactus Valley is the second map. Spawning to the top left hand corner in teal we have our Zerk Suno Kazri. And to the top right hand corner in red it's our Protoss Piscalita. Who's down a one and probably wants to take this next game in order to Shorten the distance. So, unfortunately for her getting the wrong scout, but you never know before it eventually happens. So, even Suno also being a bit unfortunate here with the first Overlord, but the second one at least will give her the scouting information. In the meantime, she goes for Hatch first. It's a very big map, so that's just the standard thing to do. Uh, you don't really want to go for an early pool and uh, a potential all-in if you don't even know where your opponent is on this map. And especially not with uh, a ramp that can be sealed off quite easily once your opponent just realizes what's going on. It's pretty risky. I mean, it might have even worked this time around, since Piscalita will even get the latest scout possible. And uh, but, but she already starts sealing off this area anyways. So yeah, uh, this would probably not have worked out for Suno if she actually had intended to do it, but she didn't, so it doesn't matter. Spawning pool halfway done, two gases being taken for Piscalita here, while the base is also halfway done, and uh, Sinus hatch will complete in just a few seconds here. Overlord will now realize that Piscalita's base is not down here, And Piscalita, in the meantime, now knowing where her opponent is, she hasn't scouted her directly, but she knows indirectly. So she just waits for a little bit longer here at the Watchtower. Don't really know what she's waiting for. Okay, now almost completely shuts off. Uh, it's only for the little gap to be filled by a unit uh, to make it a complete wall off. So, nothing all too special happening right now. We have a Summonetics Core incoming. We have a few more Zirklings, mostly for scouting purposes. And speed, Metabolic Boost, the speed for the Zirklings on its way. So, the wall is still open, and Sunokazri's Overlord is now moving onto the high ground, so that units from down below won't be able to see it. But she will just get all the vision she could ever wish for. So now the first few Zirklings managed to get in. 
So might even get a drone kill uh, or worker kill uh, here or there. So Zealot now moving around, unfortunately not prepared to seal off that uh, part here anymore. So nice little micro there by Sino Cosby. Unfortunately, it doesn't help her that much. Uh, she still loses two Zerklings to the Zealots and will now lose the last Zerkling as well without getting a scout inside the main base. Although, yeah, she would have actually seen the Stargate, which would have been quite important for her to see, I feel. So Overlord might move in a little bit later. Now the Mothership core can help seal it anyways, but uh, basically there's producing a little adapt here in order to seal off her wall because she doesn't really want to get ripped apart by a flood of links that suddenly moves in and kills her. I don't actually know if that is the correct position here. If that adapt actually covers all of that ground, to me it feels as if Zerklings could easily just pass through, but maybe I'm wrong. So I can't really see it from here, but this looks quite open to me. Whatever. Uh, since Sunokazuri is not trying to engage anyways, she just uh, wants to go for the hatchery over here. Just calls back the drones a little bit so they won't go on a distance mining. Uh, but we'll mine or we'll start mining directly towards that base over here. In the meantime, we have Phoenixes in production. For Piscalita, probably doesn't want to play against Muters on this map and also wants to deal some damage by lifting drones and picking them off whenever possible. In the meantime, a Baneling Nest incoming for Sunu Kazri and more and more workers, plus a few Zerklings that might help her out against initial pressure. Now the Overlord moves in, sees the Stargate, sees the Phoenixes, and this, of course, is the most important information she really needed. Spore crawlers go down immediately, or actually she even managed to throw them down a little bit earlier, probably timing-wise, just knowing that she would need a few spore crawlers anyway, because if you paid attention, dear viewer, you might have seen that even in the last game, Sunokazuri just planted down a few spore crawlers just in case. So going into a quicker layer this time around than uh, the last time we saw her play and actually she wants to go into the melee upgrade so probably wants to utilize her zerglings a little bit more uh, than before. So Overlord somewhere down here not even bothered. Well actually bothered to get in but then got out once more. Don't really know what this Overlord wants to do down here. It's just additional vision. Okay, Phoenix is just moving out to the middle of the map, which is quite interesting here. Yeah, don't really know what they are doing there. And now we have the first attack wave of Suno's links just moving in. And like I said, I think the Zerklings could have just ran through. There was just one Zergling right behind this Adept here. So seems as if this Adept uh, did not really seal off that wall at all. But now it's too late. Suno even going for a very early fourth base here. My god. After seeing that her opponent was going into a lot of Phoenixes, I think she figured out that... That, uh, yeah, even if the Phoenixes did some damage to her drones, there wouldn't be um, a very heavy gateway or a very gateway heavy pressure headed her way. So, not a big ground force that would move into her bases, destroying them. Of course, there's harassment, but uh, harassment only dealt by four Phoenixes. You can actually, if you have enough, uh, if you have enough larvae and hatcheries around, you can actually just out drone your opponent. So, you can just produce more drones than your opponent can pick off. We We've seen Snood do this in a match against, I don't actually know, I think against Showtime, but uh, yeah, there's this this famous match where Snood just kept producing drones and it didn't really matter that his Protoss opponent kept killing workers with uh, his Phoenixes because Snood just outproduced uh, the guy with uh, the drones he kept making, so it didn't really matter. And uh, we're sooner now on four bases to the two of Piscalita. I mean, Piscalita is now already trying to get, or is finally trying to get a third base out. Uh, just clearing overlords, but uh, not before Sunukazu could actually spot that third going down. So in the meantime, after having planted down the fourth base, Suno now just goes into a lot of Hydralisks. The immediate answer against the Phoenixes has to be careful not to overcommit with Hydras, though. Maybe she's just afraid of her opponent going straight into Sky Toss. But, um, yeah, you always have to be careful not to overcommit with Hydralis because then the opponent will just uh, build the, uh, the counter towards your Hydras, uh, most likely Colossi or maybe even High Templars with Storm. And if you've just committed too much into Hydralis Force, the Force will then just melt to the high attack Protoss army later on. So you either have to make 
Uh, I have, yeah, either have to deal a lot of damage at that point in game before the AoE eventually hits, or you just have to uh, transition into something bigger afterwards and just lo just uh, use the Hydras as um, some helping units here. Okay, first engagement between the Hydras and the rest of the army, and it feels as if Piscolita hadn't really uh, guessed that her opponent would come in with Hydras, though. Force Field's doing a great job keeping most of the Hydras out of range, so that the remaining Protoss Force could just easily deal with half of the army. That was not a big problem. Uh, Blink almost done. Sunakazuri keeps producing more and more Hydras. Is not going into Lurkadin, though. Uh, she just uh, waits for the Muscular Augments to finish, and then maybe afterwards we'll see it. And here it goes two colossi being produced and uh, once we have like four colossi up and a few force fields the hydras won't just do jack shit so in the meantime we have a warp prism for piscalita has she already realized that there's a force base she has so she will just move in warp in a few additional zealots maybe and will then probably be able to take out this base over here because suno's units are totally out of position here well it depends no more units being built being warped in and suno just moves around with all of her drones buying more and more time for these zealots and then of course this base is not going to go down. Uh, so no problem here. Pescalina now just moves right into the main base, it seems. But maybe, no, okay, just wants to bring the warp prism into safety. So Suna just barely manages to keep uh, her own base safe. It didn't even take any damage because Piscolita's zealots were just busy uh, running or chasing around these drones there. So nicely done by Suno there, just keeping everything in check. Uh, now just has to be careful that this warp prism won't move inside her main base. Uh, but unfortunately she can't just kill it because there's this little sweet spot where she can't attack it from the ground. Uh, now has to be careful and is always aware of the possibility of units moving in. By now, uh, we almost have four Colossi out. The Thermal Lands upgrade has just finished. So, yeah, like I said before, I mean, these Hydras could just be dead weight in her army now. Uh, she just moves in, uh, moves a lot of bailings here, but her opponent is playing with a lot of sentries and force fields. It might work, it all comes down to execution. Piscalita has all the necessary bits and parts in order to just destroy this force of Sunakazuri here. But let's see if she will actually be able to do it. So, where are the force fields? Where are the force fields? No force fields yet! Nothing just there, the first force fields, but the Colossi are still very exposed here. Suno Kazuri just being able to get close with all of her idol is taking down all of them. And GG. Suno Kazuri takes the second map as well. Welcome to Proxima Station. Spawning to the top right hand corner in Teal we have Suno Kazuri. And to the bottom left, in red, our Protoss Piscalita. She's down 0-2. Not a very comfortable position to be in. Already planting her pylon close to the main ramp. She has a back pocket expansion. She can easily make use of. But the same goes for Suno as well. Who will probably go for hatchery first. And there she goes. So, no cheese by any of these players. Suno already bring her overlords into position. While Piscalita goes for the first scout. Just wants to check for pool or gas, but then of course wants to check for the hatchery. And that should actually already give her all the information she needs. While her own gateway is going down, she will probably just save up 400 minerals and then just plant down her own expansion. And there it goes, only a few seconds. Oh, actually, well, Suno's space is halfway done. And only then the Nexus comes down. Well, quickest Nexus possible if you uh, don't go for Nexus first and uh, want to have the gateway out. So that you will at least be able to produce some tech and some units early on, if need be. Everything else is kinda risky. Although, a lot of Zergs usually go for the hatch first build anyways. So, uh, that's why some Protoss players, especially on ladder, 
uh, go for and Nexus first blindly because they think they can just afford it because their opponent will go for a macro build anyways. And that's why you sometimes manage to get through with it, especially on ladder. But in the best of five, things are a little bit different. So Sunu just gets the information, sees that Cybernetic Score and Gateway are already done, probably wants to see what the first unit is that pops out of that Gateway. Or maybe not, maybe just moving around and bringing her Overlord into position to later check for the base. So first few links already on the way, but uh, Zealot is already done. So no way for Sunu to deal that much damage. Of course, again, I feel that this Zealot is, again, not quite in position. I think there's just a small little gap where Zerklings might... Ah, oh, okay, now she changed it. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, I think there might have been just a small little gap here where Zerklings could have pressured through and surround this Zealot here. But there's a Mothership Core uh, available as well, so no way for Sunu... Oh, and even a second... Uh, even a Stalker already popping out. So no way for Sunu Kashi to get anything done with these Zerklings here. Still producing 10 more, so no Baneling Nest here, which is quite interesting. Maybe she just wants to pressure through this debris over here? I don't know, but Piscalita is already aware of that possibility, so she has a Stalker in place. Might even be a... Ooh, but moves it around. Okay, moves it out of position now. And yeah, there was the click by Sinu Kazri, so it seems as if she might want to break through this debris here. And uh, unfortunately for Piscalita, it seems I'm not quite certain. If, uh, I mean, this gateway is once done, might provide her some vision or maybe not. But yeah, the Stalker is just moving around once more. Oh, and she even goes in with the Overlord, not breaking through the debris. Never mind, I actually forgot that there was an evolution chamber. So yes, of course there's the possibility of drops here. There's one Stalker, but this one Stalker won't keep this Overlord from dropping. So here the first Zerklings go through, and that of course might be kind of critical there for Piscalita here. She only has a few units around, she has the Mothership Core though, but of course now opens up her main entrance here, so maybe Sumo Kazri might be able to just move in once more. Okay, uh, tries to rescue the sentry here, but uh, very important there for Suno taking out uh, this uh, important gas unit there. Yeah, now like we said before, unfortunately for Piscalita, she just grabbed all of her units, opened up her main entrance, and now the rest of the links could just run inside the main base, getting a few probe kills over here, and still some Zerklings are around dealing damage. I mean, it's not that big of a deal so far. I mean, she, she's... don't get me wrong, Sunokosri has already dealt a lot of damage here, killing off those units, maybe even getting another worker over here. So two more workers got killed, six in total, plus a sentry, plus a stalker, plus an additional stalker over here. So these links were totally worthwhile, but the economical damage was not that great. Uh, still, uh, Suno got her, um, bought herself a lot of time to get up her third base, killed a lot of the initial units, so Piscalita is already behind quite a bit, and might even be scared a little bit to move out now, since she's seen her opponent being so aggressive early on. More links being transported in by Suno Kosri from the right hand side, I think that's just how she managed to get a few more links into the base right in the early game, and now might even be able to take out a critical pylon over here before the units finally manage to warp in, but it seems as if she barely might not be able to get it. Oh, just tries to move away right at that point down. I think she could have taken it down, but then again, yeah, losing losing four Zerklings to get one pylon down, not really worth it that much. Now losing the Overlord and the four Zerklings here for not actually getting any damage dealt. <coughs> so that was actually a bit wasteful. Okay, Spire, Spire going down. I uh, don't really know if Mutas might be the right choice. Mutas always good though, if you don't need to uh, get them into a direct engagement here. And uh, after keeping Piscalita busy for quite some time, it might actually just help her anyways. Okay, this is a lot of links here, so if these links once again get the good surround of all these units, I think she should actually easily be able to take these out. Uh, doesn't really know what's up there. Doesn't see the units just barely, but gets the reinforcements here. Okay, Blink is already done, but more and more links running in. Force field's doing good work here. So Piscalita just... Oh, and now unfortunately for Sunukasri, she just wanted to move away over the right-hand side, but the force field was just completely blocking that part, so these links could actually 
not get through and got totally annihilated. That could just be a critical loss there for Sunokazuri because she's now just lost a lot of her Ling forces, is already producing more Lings and more Mutas right behind it. There's no way to reinforce this push though for Piscalita. She only has this army but no war prism around. Will now take out this force base, but that's not all too critical for Sunokazuri. You should just. Ooh! And uh, didn't even. Uh, cancel it. So no cancel here. So because we're losing a lot of her income or losing a lot of uh, her resources there. And there it is, the war prism finally out. It's very exposed by now, but unfortunately Sunu Kazuri doesn't really see it. So she doesn't know it's there. She has some mutas out, so if she focus fires down the war prism with a mutas here, I think she should be able to stop this push, especially with a lot of stalkers just being out in the open, getting killed by most of these circling. War prism is down, the force fields not the best of force fields available here, and it seems as if she doesn't have any force fields left, so now the remaining Links can just track the army down, surround everything, no mothership core, no way to evade whatsoever. And Piscalita drops down to 57 supply while taking a fourth base, a third base behind it. Sorry for that, but you won't be able to hold it. No way whatsoever. There are only a few army units out. Stalker's not that good against that amount of links. GG! And Sunokazri takes the series with a 3 to 0.